opening an episode with a blank park map can only mean one thing. It's a mini park mini series. Yes, this is not a drill. This is a Planet Coaster mini series. Thank you so much for coming along to this one. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, so, you guys have asked me to do this alongside the Planet Zoo series that we're doing for Tignani Gardens at the moment because you missed Planet Coaster, right? And so, this is going to be a mini series in every aspect. Welcome to the coast and welcome to an unnamed town, I haven't got a clue, but f uh, viewers familiar with Western Supermare in the UK will be familiar with this kind of site. Uh, so let me talk you through the whole idea and the whole process of this because there's going to be some viewer interaction that's going to be involved with this. So Western Supermare has this outdoor swimming pool called Tropicana. It's no longer a swimming pool, it's now been converted into a theme park. So this... This is our theme park. This is our mini park. This is what we're doing. But in order for us to have the ultimate realism and the immersion that you guys love from this channel, I have also need to start to start to create the town. Um, so this is what I've done. I've pulled in just buildings randomly from Fundy Fun Spot. Um, I think I've probably used quite a lot of Spikes buildings, to be honest with you. But I've just pulled in buildings just to create the, the idea of the seafront and the idea of the... Uh, the buildings and everything that would go along it and then of course no seafront is complete without a super wheel so that's what we've started to put in here uh, and then of course we've got this this area here so the idea of this area being that you'd have uh, an entrance area here uh, and then it opens out into the theme park now this is going to be one of those series where we start dealing with jank we're going to be dealing low budget we're going to be dealing low detail uh, janky park right so that's kind of what we're going for here we're just converting some kind of old space uh, this side would be uh, offices and maintenance areas and stuff they would be the former changing rooms but they would have been knocked through entrance area is going to be here and then of course we've got this open green uh, we've got the playground area here we've got the buildings and all of that sort of stuff so this is what we're going for in this series now there's some interaction involved with this one because by the end of this episode the starter park for this is going to be complete so i'm going to have kitted out and decorated everything that i want so all of this along the seafront uh, is going to be kitted out and um, the entrance area will be ready and be done uh, and the uh, cityscape and everything well it is pretty much done as it is what i'll do then is stick it up on the workshop for you guys to start playing with you then have three weeks from the publish of this video three weeks to create your own mini park and we'll then do a showcase of all of your uh, of all of your parks so you'll submit them to me submit your links before the deadline i'll then record a video looking through all of yours and we'll compare it to what i can build so you're you are in official uh, you are in an official competition there's no there's no prize just bragging rights uh, and you can get your parks in so i really can't wait to see what you guys do so i am not going to waste any more time i'm going to carry on detailing and i will see you in a minute so if you're familiar with the channel, by now you've already realised that we don't make our own versions of things, we just rip off existing things. <laughs> and that's exactly what we've got here. This is Tropicana from Western Supermare, everybody. <laughs> so essentially uh, what I've done is I've just taken this idea of the swimming pool and everything. So Tropicana, as I said in the first update, is an old swimming pool in Western Supermare that went bankrupt. It's, the, the, the site has been used for many, many things, including a Banksy exhibition, uh, which was all themed around a dystopian theme park so you know you kind of guess where this is going by now <laughs> but in this scenario here what we're doing is we're saying that this park is now used as a semi-permanent theme park so think along the lines of south end uh, and think along the lines of santa monica pier for example um and so we're going to have semi-permanent attractions in here they're not going to be fairground style rides um but they are going to be fairground style rides that they would be the permanent installation ones and that's purely because of the way planet coaster plays that's not because of any other way like we can't do transport and um temporary rides very well in the game right so anyway what we've got here is this janky low budget park because this this area is not designed to be a theme park it's not designated as a theme park they've just come along and stuck some rides in and, and hope for the best so remember that this used to be a swimming pool these would have been the changing rooms here this is the ticket hall this would have been the 
the cafe serving the whole the whole area and this would have been the gift shop this is where you would have bought stuff like inflatables and armbands and all of those sort of stuff um and so it's been repurposed for that reason so therefore it's not meant to be a theme park entrance it's meant to be like a representation of it so here we've got surfside cafe and uh, this is exactly as you'd expect it to be kitted out of course it still needs its final details and still needs a lot of detailing and, and everything but this is essentially how it possibly would have looked when the swimming pool was open um it retained some of its original features it's retained some of its original theming uh, of course like i say i need to do the the detailing stuff along here but this is essentially like how i wanted it to look and then inside here they've given it a little bit of a touch up uh, so they've put all of this stuff on the ceiling this wood cladding and everything uh, and then they just kitted it out with stuff that now represents a theme park but of course it wouldn't have done it would have all been water based it would have been been splash based you know you would have had stuff to do with water slides and waves and beaches and all of that sort of stuff um so this is what we got and i've come across here made it functional and we've just got a load of uh, a load of shops that are going on and some guys that are just staring at us like that's really creepy <laughs> so coming back out to the outside then um I've just put some neons in the window. Again, it needs to look cheap and tacky. And this is where I'm really going to struggle with Planet Coaster because everything's so well polished and everything looks brand new, right? So I don't know how I'm going to weather this stuff. I might need to use some of the dirt decals. I want it to look weathered, but not dirty. That's the thing. Um, but anyway, uh, you would have also had this awful, awful tiled floor as well. Um, if you imagine like the cheapest, nastiest swimming pool tiles that you could get for public area, that would have been here. And this is the closest that I can find uh, without using the tactile um, ones, you know, that, that we use on the pavements with the, the bubbles and stuff. So this is the closest I can get. It looks weathered. It looks a little bit old. It looks a little bit, um, a bit rubbish. But this whole floor would have gone right across the entire length of the, uh, or the width, if you, it depends how you look at it, um, would have gone right along, uh, right through to the gift shop and right through to the ticket entrance. So that's what, that's what we've done here. Uh, I haven't put the roof in this bit. Because I'm still working on this area right here, so um, and I need to be able to see. Uh, I need to be able to see down. But this is the main entrance way, um, and this is now going to be where you used to buy your tickets for the swimming pool, and it's now been repurposed to buy tickets for the theme park. And this is going to be one of those where you don't buy tickets like a turnstile ticket. You buy tickets as in credits to ride rides, and you are definitely given that the doors uh, are either side. You're definitely going to walk past this before you even do anything <laughs> like it's supposed to be so badly designed and so badly put together that it's like it's well and then we've got the <laughs> we've got the slogan at the top it's not good but it's not totally terrible <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea of what we're going for uh, in this series started to get out this area then with um all of the stuff that you find, so computers um, and a bit of merchandise and whatever. But like I said, this needs to be cheap and janky. It's not well put together. This isn't a Chacholandia style budget. This is put together on a shoestring because they just took on the building because they can. It was going cheap. Um, and I don't know why they would offer park maps. It's not going to be big enough to have a park map. It is going to be the case of walking out into the swimming pool area and... Yeah, <laughs> that's what you got. That's all she says. This area, by the way, uh, this is the same size as Tropicana. So, I'm, I've, well, I say same size. I've made it a little bit bigger to account for some of the scale of the ride. You know, the bigger pads and everything. But it's ultimately, it's the same scale as Tropicana. So, we'll see how that's going to pan out. Um, I've done a bit of testing. I can get a couple of coasters in there. I can get quite a few rides and whatever. So, we should be good to go. Uh, then in here, this is where I've done uh, the least amount of detailing. And this is where I still need to do the most amount of detailing. It's in the gift shop. Now, you've seen me do gift shops before. Um, you've probably already worked out that I actually save my gift shop stuff as a blueprint. Bring it into the next park and I just reuse it. I kind of in that principle of going, why do I need to redo everything? for every single park when I've got something that's sufficient and it can save time um, and a bit of effort by doing it. So this is what I've done here. You would have recognised all of these shelves from Chachalandia, from Fundy Fun Spot, and you would have also seen them in Raygate Lake as well. Um, but then coming over this way, you would also have t-shirts and stuff. Now, this is a, a kind of a shop that would sell buckets and spades for the beach. It, they would sell the inflatables. They would sell... Uh, rock. We sell rock. It's like a... Um, for the Americans and non-British people that are watching the video, um, <laughs> rock means something very different <laughs> elsewhere 
in the world. No, we don't sell that in our in our beachside uh, gift shops. It's like a um, a sugar based sweet uh, candy almost that uh, is put together and it's uh, and you find like different colours through the centre and everything. I'd say Google it, but no, don't Google Rock. Just don't do it. <laughs> Brighton Rock or Blackpool Rock if you go into if you are going to Google it it's a, it's a candy anyway that's all you need to know <laughs> can you imagine if we did that on our beaches <laughs> oh my dear it's Western Supermare oh I'm going to get cancelled um so anyway I've called this uh, gift shop Knickknacks Gifts um so that's just something nice and simple and of course you've got all of the tat and everything that uh, that lives out the front uh, lives out the front here and so what we've now got uh, is apart from this mess down here that I need to get some janitors on uh, we have this seafront um parking and this is exactly how it is in western supermare it's a straight promenade it's completely straight as well it's, there's no curved curvature to it at all it's like this this uninspired straight line that you've got loads of uh, car parking spaces on one side and then coach parking on the other and they do this because they have a carnival every uh, every year they haven't done it in the last last year obviously for obvious reasons but every year they have a carnival of lights and this is the parking area that they use so they just use that throughout this the beachfront beachfront parking and stuff actually this place is a proper state look at it <laughs> and uh yeah so this is what we this is what i'm going for i need to kit out some of the beach i need to make it look like it's a it's an actual beach um and fine details so i'm going to get on with those fine details and when i see you for the next update we should have a starter park ready for you to download <laughs> i mean we're getting cancelled anyway might as well go out and call the place disneyland and plus you guys always ask me to do a disney thing so this is the closest you're gonna get but either way, we've got ourselves a pretty decent starter park ready for you guys and the competition. I've got some rules we're going to need to go through. I'll go through that in a moment because uh, we're going to need to be quite strict with this. But this is your starter for 10. Now, please uh, ignore the fact that the city and everything is a bit janky and it's a bit rubbish. It's supposed to be like that. It's just there to pay homage to the fact that there's a city there. It's not supposed to be high detail. And plus, I wanted to save some of the piece count and everything because you guys aren't going to be running on uh, PCs and everything. I want, it, I want this to be as accessible as I can possibly make it for people. So that's why the back of this building is not finished and blah, 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 blah. Because the important bit is the view from this side, right? To make it believe that there's a that there's a city there. So in terms of the actual starter park, then I've done quite a lot of detailing on the street to make it look real. So we've now got things like bollards and the lampposts and the road signs and the traffic lights and all that. That's all been done. I've also just made a few tweaks along here as well. Added in a couple of bus stops and stuff. And these buildings, they are functional as um, shops and everything. And that's purely because in the early game, your guests need shops and stuff whilst you're uh, whilst you're actually building and whatever. So that's what we're doing here. Um, and like I say, it's just supposed to represent the fact that there are buildings and there's a city and there's supposed to be a town. Oh, that's a tree. Uh, <laughs> a town and whatever. <laughs> Apparently, that's become the uh, uh, that's become the phrase of every series I do. Oh, that's a tree. Uh, <laughs> so pray. Yeah. So there's supposed to be a city and everything in the background here, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, I've kept this area open. That's, in, that's done intentionally. That's how it is in Western Supermare. Uh, and of course, you know all about the, the playground and stuff. But this is where the main changes have uh, taken place. So we've now got all of this foliage and everything in the front here. This is supposed to be like an unkempt flower bed. Uh, you don't tend to find many big trees and a lot of flowers on the coast because of the salt and everything that comes off of the sea. Um, so you tend not to find too many trees in places like this. But I've put, I've put some in. I mean, you do find them. It's not as if it's never a thing. But just typically... Typically in a built-up area, you don't put trees in because you'll be obscuring the view of the sea and everything from buildings. Oh, it's just all sorts of regulation and rubbish that goes with it. Uh, but anyway, we've got Disneyland is what I'm calling mine. You guys are free to call yours whatever you like. Um, that's not it's not set in stone that you have to call it this, but I'm just going to call it call it this. Um, for uh, various <laughs> various reasons, uh, it also kind of pays homage, by the way, to the fact that the real life counterpart of this hosted the Banksy art exhibition, which is like a utopia or a dyst dystopia, sorry, um, a dystopian theme park. So, uh, and that was called Dismal Land. So I've kind of yeah, I'm copying. Get over it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's Surfside Cafe. I've done a bit of touching up here. There's menus and stuff now on the windows. Uh, all of the no smoking signs, all the compliance signs. Uh, done all of the stuff on the outside as well. So this now actually looks like a, a pretty cheap cafe that you, you'd find. Um, and on the inside, just some kitting out and some decorating and, and whatever. And that's just going to walk through this dude. Uh, oh, he's all sad. 
<laughs> so he's just come out the wall. Oh my god, this is just a nightmare. <laughs> it's just this is just okay. It's a starter park. Deal with it. <laughs> so anyway, we've got uh, all the details and stuff in here. Um, and I've put all of the. I'm going to move out of the way because people are walking through us. I've put all of the posters and stuff on the walls, and uh, we're all looking good. Uh, we're all looking good there. So then, in the main foyer. Done some touching up on the outside, giving it its final details, its final decor and stuff. Uh, so it's looking actually pretty quite good. It's turned out better than I th wanted it to, really. Um, I decided to make... I don't know if this was in the last update, actually, because it's been a while since I've recorded the last update. But I did a curve on here. So uh, I actually... The originally, I wanted it to be a flat front, but it just looked too boxy. So I thought, no, I need to put some character into my building sometime. So that's what I've done here. Uh, just put a curve on it. Gives it a bit more of a Victorian feel. Uh, and then I'm just going to fight with the camera a moment just to get inside here. Uh, there we go. So I've charted up on the inside here. I've put some more decorations up. Um, and I've also done this as well, this like concrete bracing. Uh, so in the actual real life, in the real life thing, it's quite a rundown unkempt building because it's not meant to be, as I said in the previous updates, it's not meant to be a theme park ticket office. It's meant to be this like dead space and so that's kind of what I'm going for the feeling I'm going for here is that they've just kitted this out um, and so that's what we've got we've got the concrete pillars we've got the the open air AC units we've got the fluorescent lights on the ceiling and all that sort of stuff so that's kind of the vibe that I'm going for in here I stopped just short of putting the dirt decals up because then it made it look dirty and this place wouldn't necessarily be dirty it's just a bit run down it just needs a little bit of love um so i i took them away and i thought no it's it's unloved enough as it is i mean we've got no signs for the cafe that's pretty typical we've got no signs for the gift shop over here that's pretty typical so i'm happy with uh, with how this has turned out so we're going to walk along this way and i've just put loads of like money making things along the side uh, you know games machines and, and, and all of that sort of stuff the ticket booths have all been uh, touched up and they've had a bit more detailing added to them so this is now looking a bit better. Uh, it's looking a bit more put together and a bit more thought out than perhaps it did before. And then we're going to come back this way. Uh, yeah, again, more money making stuff along here. So uh, things like buying drinks and whatever and, and souvenirs and tap. But you don't want to be taking too much of your business away from the gift shop. The gift shop is there to, to serve a purpose, right? So you just have like things that you might grab people's attention as they walk past into whatever your park is going to be. And then inside here, you've got the gift shop. And again, this this idea of this whole area would have originally been one open room. There wouldn't have been partitioned walls and stuff. There would have just been these pillars and it would have gone right through. And that's why these pillars go right through um, and they go across and they're, they're full bracing and everything. So that's kind of like done by design. This this just would be one massive open space. Uh, and then we've come into this way. And I've just tarted out all of the um, gift shops. So we've got a bit of decoration. Made a bit of effort on our displays and stuff stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'm looking I'm looking good. I'm looking good there. And then out on the outside, I've just put a couple of bits of detailing. So you'll notice when you get the park for yourself that the amount of detail decreases as the further away that you get. And as just to remind you, that's by design. That's not because I'm lazy or because I've missed it or whatever it's because the focal point of this entire series is here so all of the detail would be here and then you move away from the detail down this way otherwise it's not going to be a mini series um it's going to end up being a full series because we end up building an entire full park right so uh it is what it is so this is it from the from the top um concrete roofs and everything and uh, I've just put some flags and, and whatever uh, on the top here now I'm going to do some more detailing to this right but I didn't want to force your hand in how your frontage and everything looked in terms of decoration whether you wanted to put your own flags and bunting and stuff out there so I'm going to keep this for the starter park I'm going to keep it completely fresh completely blank now let's talk rules because this is going to go up on the workshop you've got three weeks from today to get your submissions to me now we're going to do this in the similar way that we did fundy fun spot so when you are ready uh, upload it to the workshop and tag it with troppy chacho i'll put that on the on screen for you to see so troppy chacho is your keyword i'm going to be using that key phrase to find your submission if you don't use that i'm not going to find it it's as simple as that another rule for you is you are not allowed to build in anything other than the perimeter that I've set out in this swimming pool area. So this does include the maintenance area. It does include the restaurant and the gift shop. You can do what you like to those. Um, what's this? And uh, 
it's just peeking through the concrete uh yeah and you're allowed to do any maintenance area the gift shop and the entrance area and stuff uh but you are not allowed to go out of this perimeter wall so just to let you know if you do add anything to the grass area to the beaches or you make any changes they are going to get deleted brutally deleted they're just going to get removed um so please just don't even of course if you're playing it offline and you're playing it privately do whatever you like to the to the starter park but if you're submitting it for the tour you are only permitted with this area uh so the other thing i do need to ask you to do is not to extend the area this is what you get given this is what you're building within so please don't think oh i'm going to get away with making this a little bit wider or whatever no stop it <laughs> And uh, all I'm going to ask as well, God, <laughs> this is going down here rapidly. Hey, best series ever. <laughs> the other thing I'm going to ask you is please don't change anything uh, in this area either. Um, I am going to la allow an exception and say if you want to do something specifically to the wheel, then go ahead. Uh, but please don't change anything anything else around it and that's just so that we can keep it as a level playing field just stick to the inside of the swimming pool and this bit here right so like i say three weeks from today the starter file is on the steam workshop the link for that is in the description out do me please guys do not let me down i want to see some amazing work i cannot wait i cannot cannot wait to see this stuff and by the way even if you think it's rubbish please submit it anyway I'm going to look forward to, to seeing them all. So thank you for getting to the end of this episode. You've probably left by now. I'm probably talking to myself. It's fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> so guys, I'll see you for the next episode. Until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.